This is what we're bringing. Three totes, Milwaukee pack out. Then we got uh, three oil jugs back here and there and two totes. And I'm gonna have to put this toolbox up on the deck, I guess. Let's do a quick giveaway here. I got all my electronics, that's everything. Uh, correctly guess how much this weighs. First person to guess right, or we may as well do whoever guesses right, I'll send you out a free rider hat. The last but definitely not least, Let's get these friggin' sleds up on the deck. We're dropping this one off in Saskatchewan. It's go time, baby. It's after three, we need to leave. Just going through Sudbury here now, and then up to the Salton Road to Wawa. Salton Road here, take a little pit stop, check on the sleds. Uh, we got 80 kilometers of gravel road now, so gotta make sure they're tied down good. Got the gravel road out of the way. We're an hour and 40 minutes from Wawa, or 145 kilometers. And it says we've got 163 kilometers to empty, so I think we'll make it there. I've never made it that far on a tank before. But. See if we make it 883 kilometers to the next stop. Just pulled into Gnor here, my uh, brother's place, little brother. Yeah. I only have one brother, but uh, yeah. We ended up making it to Kenora in pretty much exactly 17 hours on the dot. I think it's usually what, an 18 and a half hour? I've never done it in 18. 18? Yeah. You're slow is what you're saying. <laughs> How are you gonna keep up on the snowmobile? I won't. <laughs> yeah, Jason's also coming out to Kenora. Yeah. He's only had one mountain experience. I'll put Four a little, days I'll put a little blooper like in right years. here. Oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what, what are you doing? Do you want up? Just like Ryder, eh? What a salty, salty mess. What is it? What is it? Come here. Ah, uh, no. Nice try. <laughs> what you got? Let me see. I didn't think we were going to, but we spent uh, Christmas with the whole family here up in Kenora. And now, back on the road to Saskatoon, I guess. Originally, I thought uh, I was going to meet Buddy on the Trans-Canada, which is, I mean, I assume is Highway 1, but I didn't really look at a map, and he's in Saskatoon, so a little bit out of the way, but 
I guess we'll get some new scenery this year. You know what's brutal is the Ontario-Manitoba border is exactly the halfway mark for me. So all of Ontario is basically single lane highway, 90 km an hour speed limits. And as soon as you hit Manitoba, speed limit is 100 and then the divided highway starts. Wow, you're so cool. Let, let me see you. Let me see that. Oh, what? Big groovy. Oh, wow. Hey! I was getting cold, you know. Doing 120 and this guy's cooking. I just dropped my 2021 off here in Saskatoon to the guy that's buying it and uh, I guess he was in a rush to get back to his party he was at because he left before I gave him the ownership and bill of sale so uh, <laughs> morning new day here uh stayed over in kindersley i think it's called a little chilly out this morning gonna go warm up the truck and fuel it up and we'll come back and pick up chloe go any day now <laughs> didn't really like that <laughs> it's a really good thing i put in new batteries before i left uh, it was sounding a little weak in the mornings It's eight o'clock and it's still pitch black here. I'm gonna get some good fuel mileage today. Got a tailwind. That's another province done and over with. I feel like we're finally getting somewhere now. Just a little context for this next part. I was gonna do a Q&A the day before, but the audio was crappy, so I didn't use it. And then I redid it, so here's that. First question we got, what are your biggest goals for this season? I'd say my biggest goal is really just to put out the best content possible for you guys. How much money do you burn in fuel? I'll uh, let you know when I get to Revelstoke, but I'm guessing seven to nine hundred dollars. Just one sled so far. Yep. Uh, hopefully Jason McMurray is going to bring my other sled out. Do you have a favorite memory from snowmobiling? Um, honestly, I couldn't pick a favorite because there's been so many days on the snow where I'm just like, man, this is the best day ever. So. You know, there's lots of days that stand out to me, but I, I can't pick a favorite. What brand would you ride if Skidoo didn't exist? Definitely be a Lynx or a Polaris. What's your favorite Skidoo in the 2022 lineup? Uh, definitely the Free Ride 154 Turbo, seeing as how that's what I've got up on the deck here. What drives you to film and create daily videos? I've just always really enjoyed doing it. And then also the support from you guys on the videos is awesome. So it just inspires me to keep going. How long will your season be this year? Uh, probably about the same time as last year or 100 days right Chloe no. favorite types of rides and why like explorer days jumping trees my favorite type of riding is honestly just a mixture of everything it depends on the weather um, I love exploring I love tree riding I'm not a big jumper but you know I have fun building the jumps and then I also like watching the guys hit the jumps and I like to film it so what do you like most about skidoo I've rolled skidoo rolled i've rolled i've rolled skidoos my whole life i've rode skidoo my whole life and i've loved every sled i've owned they've been amazing for me and they just work really well for my type of riding style advice for ontario guys who have never ridden the mountains just get out to the mountain and start riding but make sure you've got the right safety gear and also make sure you have all your avalanche gear and most importantly you know how to use it it's like traveling on christmas uh, it's kind of weird being on the road for Christmas, but it's also kind of nice because there's like no traffic. I didn't see one transport all day yesterday, so that's nice. When's the best time to ride in Revelstoke? Best chance for pow and sun. Uh, you know, if you want sun, the best time to ride in Revelstoke is I'd say March. If you want pow, I haven't been there in December, but I know there's lots of good pow days in December. But, you know, it's Revelstoke and it's always snowing, so... 
you're going to find the snow. Are you going to explore out of Revelstoke this year? Uh, you know, I do want to, definitely. It is also hard, and I do have one place rented for five weeks, so I probably won't for those five weeks. But then after that, I want to do some day trips at least, and I'd also like to get out to the coast. Are you going to run LEDs on the new free ride? Nope. Not really any benefit, in my opinion, to running LED lights because, well, not on a mountain sled, that is. Which mountain do you prefer to ride? Boulder Mountain, 100%. Will your next video be you in the sled? Um, not sure I could fit in this sled, but I'll probably be on the sled, yeah. I'm gonna use the 146 since you don't have your other sled. Yeah, the 146 is definitely gonna get some use. Chloe will be riding it. What's been your favorite sled that you had? Definitely the 154 free ride turbo from last year. Having a turbo is a lot of fun. Have you ever had to search for someone caught in an avalanche? No, I have not, and I definitely wanna keep it that way. What mic are you using in your helmet? I'm just using a standard old lapel mic. It's in the description of every video I post. How does the manual Cummins with a deck and two sleds on it do? Uh, I've also got like 300 liters extra fuel and a lot of gear. So it does, it does really well. Um, got pretty good fuel mileage the last couple days. I was getting about 750 kilometers to a tank. Are you gonna send it this year? Um, I wanna jump a little more, but I'm not, I'm not gonna go crazy. What's your second sled that you ordered? Great question. What's your new sled? Great question. What was your first adventure out west and why do you keep going back? My first time out west was to Togodi Mountain Lodge in 2015 with uh, my dad and his buddies. It was a lot of fun. And then two years later, I think, we went to Revelstoke again with him and his buddies and then a couple of my buddies. The year after that, uh, nobody was planning anything, so I was like, okay, <laughs> see you guys, I'm going out west. Uh, my dad and a couple of my friends ended up coming out, but yeah, I haven't stopped going since. How long are your days with riding and editing? This time of year, when the days are short, the days aren't too long, I'm usually done by like 11 o'clock at night. But then once we roll into March, there's many days where I'm up to two in the morning, sometimes even three. We're planning a trip to Revy next season, any tips to have a good time? So I mentioned the safety part, that's a big factor. And then just to go farther, I just ride up Boulder Mountain, easy to find, go up there and kind of branch out from there. What factors do you look for when choosing a sled? Thought you would have gone for the expert. Honestly, I was gonna go for an expert and then last minute I switched to the free ride and I was going to put the narrow ski stance on the free ride this year, but it wasn't really available at first. So I just didn't get around to it. And then there's also another reason, but I won't get into that right now. How did you get started doing your sled vlog? A long time ago, I used to actually watch people moto vlog, which I didn't even ride a motorcycle, but I'd watch that kind of stuff. And I always thought it'd be sweet to start a sled vlog. It took me quite a few years to actually start it, but uh, I did it and best decision I ever made. When will you buy Rototill for your excavator? Uh, I've been trying to convince the boss man for a couple of years to buy one because I think it'd be great for the machine I run, but uh, I don't know if it'll happen. You think you're gonna get 100 days of straight riding in this season? 100 days straight, that'd be pretty impressive. Uh, but Chloe said I could do 100 days, so we're good. Right? What led to your success on YouTube? So after a full season of making these videos every day, I was getting about one to 300 views a video. And honestly, I was stoked on that, but I knew since I was doing something that nobody else was doing, it was only a matter of time before like the YouTube algorithm would pick up my videos and push it to more people. And then once that following fall rolled around, the videos just started going like this. And I, I was so stoked. And uh, I didn't really think it grow as big as it has, but it's really cool to see. And snowmobiling is also a really small niche. So I think the channel can only really get so big. What do you think about electric snowmobiles? Uh, I think this is a pretty controversial topic in the sledding community because I know there's a lot of die-hard die hard motorheads. But I think the electric snowmobile idea is really cool. I don't think the battery technology is there yet, but uh, if it gets there, I would definitely ride an electric snowmobile. Do you wish your truck was automatic for the long drives or does it not really matter? It doesn't really matter because it's just straight on the highway for hours on end without changing gears, but I'm kind of over the manual thing. I'd probably just get an automatic for my next truck. And they don't even make a standard truck anymore, so. How long have you been riding for? 
I've been riding my whole life, but I've been mountain riding for about five years now. What are you going to do for your next truck when you sell this one? I might go to a Ford. Uh, they did just update the interior a little bit. It's still a little outdated compared to the Dodge. The Dodge, I think, has the nicest interior, and it's a pretty good looking truck, too. Uh, it's definitely between the two of them, but I'm not brand loyal at all. How can I buy merch if the website is shut down? Um, if you're in Revelstoke, you can buy something from me. Are you sponsored by Skidoo? No, I'm not. I've definitely had lots of people mistakenly think I was, but no, I, I definitely don't have any connection with Skidoo whatsoever. Do you ever feel lonely doing snowmobile related stuff? Do you wish you had someone with you filming and editing and just living the same lifestyle that you do? No, I don't really feel lonely because I'm always around people. Um, I'm always riding with lots of guys, having a good time. It's not just me by myself, filming people and spending the night by myself. Best way to keep the GoPros from freezing up and the batteries from dying. Uh, I don't have any solution for that. I struggle just like everybody else. I carry like nine batteries with me. Apparently that new cold weather battery is good, but you can't get it in Canada. So if there's someone in the States that could send that up to me, shoot me a message. And do you offer any ride days for your viewers? I haven't, no, but it would be pretty cool to do. That's all for the question and answers, guys. Thanks for asking. There was a ton of questions. Sorry if I didn't get to yours, but I didn't want to drag it out too long. I see the mountains. Chloe, there's mountains. Well, let's see the damage. 3,800 kilometers, 39 hours of my truck running. Nice view from the room here for the night. Nice bluebird day out today. I missed it. We should have we should have done the drive in two days. Then I could have rode the bluebird pow that everyone always wants.